Our world is full of diagrams, graphic representations of everything from the solar system to the hidden origins of life. They have a unique ability to express complex ideas simply, and an intellectual and artistic beauty that has the power to inspire awe and change our perceptions. There is one diagram that has gone beyond our world. Its purpose is to communicate fundamental facts about us to life on other planets. And it left Earth in 1972 on board the Pioneer 10 space probe. It's the most enterprising and optimistic diagram ever created. A diagram to transcend all languages and cultures. And now it's billions of miles away beyond our solar system. It was called the Pioneer Plaque, and it was a hugely ambitious project. One single diagram would have to be Earth's message to the stars. It would represent the whole of humanity, show where we are and what we are like. As well as being a scientific tool for locating the Earth and the solar system, it also had to be an object of beauty. So how could one single diagram do all of that? What do you put in and what do you leave out? And ultimately, what does it tell us and unknown others about who we are. At 8.42 p.m., on Thursday, the 2nd of March, 1972, the unmanned space probe Pioneer 10 is launched from Cape Canaveral Air Force Base in Florida. It heads for the huge planet of Jupiter and then on towards the edge of our solar system. By no means out of the question that there are forms of life in the clouds of Jupiter, Indeed, if you viewed the solar system from afar, I think you could make an argument that life on Jupiter was more likely than life anywhere else, including on the Earth. Pioneer 10's mission was to take detailed photographs of Jupiter and its moons, and to study the atmosphere of outer space, its particles and solar winds, the flux and velocity of the abundant dust particles. But Pioneer 10 also had a second mission, firmly attached to the antennae support struts and protected from erosion by interstellar dust. It was the most enterprising, artistic and scientific diagram of all time, the ultimate diagram, the Pioneer plaque. In carefully engraved graphic images and mathematical symbols, the plaque would reveal the Earth's location in the galaxy and would tell extraterrestrial intelligent life what humans look like. NASA were extremely excited. The problem facing the designers was how to decide what to include, what science and what art. The original is billions of miles away in space. But this is the engravers in San Carlos, California, where the plaque was produced. It was made of gold-covered aluminium. There were, in fact, two copies of the plaque that were sent out into space, one on Pioneer 10, the other on Pioneer 11, launched a year later. Both were created from this template, the master Pioneer plaque. It's really extraordinarily heavy. Um, of course, the original plaque that was on the Pioneer uh, would have been about this size and much lighter because you wouldn't want to disrupt the balance of the spacecraft. And this is really quite a special diagram because all the other diagrams I've seen in this series have been drawn and this one is literally dug out of this piece of metal. The diagram has a beauty that no drawn reproduction could imitate. It has a curious period feel about it as well, 
which is difficult to pinpoint, but it's definitely there. Perhaps it's the font, the width of the drawn lines. Or is it those haircuts? These human figures do look classically 70s American. The intention behind the plaque was to communicate rudimentary information about the planet Earth and its inhabitants. It's actually a really simple picture, um, but that's the point about a diagram. You need to throw away information so you just keep what is essential. It's interesting, it's a real nice combination of mathematics and art, but what does it all mean? Well, some of it's pretty obvious, the pictures of the man and the woman, I understand. Uh, if you go down to the bottom here, then there are lots of little circles, and these are a picture of our solar system, the planets in order. So we've got the, the sun here, and we've got uh, Mercury, Venus, uh, Earth, and this is where we live. And above each of the planets are little things which I know actually are binary numbers. Uh, they're ones and dashes. Um, instead of a zero, which might look like another planet, actually, um, the artist has used a dash to indicate um, nothing. And you can tell that the plaque came from the third planet, our planet, planet Earth, because there's a line being drawn from the planet out to a little picture of the Pioneer probe. The whole design assumes that binary mathematics, and indeed drawing, are not only international, but universal languages. At first glance, interpreting the diagram is not easy. This dumbbell, for instance, is a unit of measurement, I think. And this wonderful star diagram, which fans out across the plaque, depicts the location of certain pulsars or pulsating stars. But how does that work? It's intriguing because the very nature of this diagram is that it's two-dimensional and it's actually depicting a three-dimensional universe. The whole plaque is encoding such interesting information, but how did they decide what they were going to include? What do all these symbols mean? And if you're representing life on Earth, then why did they draw the figures naked? The plaque was designed by two astrophysicists, Carl Sagan and Frank Drake. And together with Carl Sagan's then wife, Linda, they conceived the plaque and supervised its production. Sagan wanted the plaque to transcend the ugliness of 20th century life, war, nuclear threat and all that. He also wanted it to be an object of beauty that would represent all mankind. There were, of course, parameters. The plaque would have to be small and light enough not to disturb the delicate technology of the spacecraft. And it would have to communicate facts in a straightforward and unambiguous way. In Mountain View, California, the SETI Institute scans space for signs of extraterrestrial communications. Its founder is Frank Drake, and after a lifetime searching, he still believes in the possibility of other intelligent life in the cosmos. Back in December 1971, his friend Carl Sagan suggested they work together on a design for their own interstellar message. Well, we thought the most interesting thing to the extraterrestrials would be what are we like? And so we wanted figures of a man and a woman. And then some information about what planet or place this plaque came from and how long ago, because it may be millions of years till the plaque is intercepted by someone. And so we had needed a means to establish time and place of launch of the spacecraft, and we did that by using a map showing the location of 14 pulsars with respect to the sun. So how does it do all that? Well, the center of the map represents the solar system. And from there, we see lines going out radially. Each line represents the direction and distance to a pulsar. A pulsar is the remnant of a supernova explosion, which spins very rapidly, and as a result, sends out very uniformly spaced in time pulses of radio emission. So this was a way by which the extraterrestrials, even after millions of years, could recognize which object was being described by its pulsing frequency. 
and the pulsar's pulsing frequency is shown in binary arithmetic, which is the simplest number system to provide time and length information. And of course, they have 14 independent uh, values for this from which they could deduce from where and when the plaque was lodged. Is 14 just enough? Actually, two pulsars would have been enough. But uh, we gave them 14, I guess, just to make life easy for them. <laughs> <laughs> the universe is three-dimensional, so is there information here about what uh, angle you're looking at? Uh, uh, actually, there is. Now, uh, of course, <clears throat> our galaxy is very nearly flat. However, there is on each line, if you look, a mark. Oh, yes. Which shows the distance above or below the galactic plane that the pulsar is. So that oh. actually provides the third dimension exactly what you're concerned with. Ah, oh, very interesting. Drake and Sagan assume that the language of science, and especially mathematics, must be common to all technological civilizations. If true, an extraterrestrial intelligence would understand the plaque because science and maths will be the same throughout the universe. The issue they now faced was getting their diagram into space. They took their plans to NASA in December 1971. Pioneer 10 was scheduled for launch the following February. Time was against them, but they hoped to persuade NASA of the diagram's importance. This is the Ames Research Center near Mountain View. And it's one of the biggest space centers of its kind. It's where the Pioneer probes were first conceived and managed. The project was started in 1964 when it was proposed that a spacecraft could be sent out of the solar system into galactic space. The project was well advanced, so would they be happy with the idea of the Pioneer probe carrying a message from humankind? In 1971, it was just over two years after the Apollo landing on the moon, and NASA wanted a new project that was equally ambitious. The unmanned pioneer would go where no spacecraft had been before, to the outer planets. The major aim was to go to Jupiter, because that, as you know, is the largest planet in the solar system. It actually comprises 75% of all the planetary mass so it's a, a very exciting venture, and uh, let's do it. By going by Jupiter, which has such tremendous mass and gravitational potential, it made use of the gravitational assist of Jupiter to accelerate it. The launch speed was 30,000 miles per hour. We tripled it by just going through that. It was just, it was like a slingshot, just uh, catapulted by Jupiter out of the solar system. What do you think of the plaque as a, as a diagram sends out there? Well, I just think it's fantastic. It's uh, a little bit complicated in the interpretation of it, but this was Earth's first emissary to the outer space. NASA didn't approve the plaque immediately, and in the meantime, Sagan and Drake had to finish designing it in the few weeks remaining. So far, they'd worked out how to show where the Earth was. Now they decided that it might be useful to include a means to calculate time and distance. The basic chemistry of the universe provided the answer. We needed to give them a time unit, which was universal. And we did that with the sketch up here, which shows the hydrogen atom in its two lowest energy states. And when the hydrogen atom switches from one energy state to the other, it radiates a radio wave with a certain wavelength mm -hmm. and with a certain frequency of oscillation. Uh, the time between oscillations becomes the time unit, and the wavelength becomes the length unit for the message. Could you explain how you can work out the height of the woman from the plaque? The height can be worked out because we have here a line drawn at her feet, and up here a line at her head, and the distance between there and there, of course, is it's her height. And sure enough, there is a number.